Welcome to the Raspberry Pi Dramble cluster video series. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Ansible to install all the software that you need onto this Raspberry Pi cluster so that you can run a Drupal 8 website on it. The first step after setting up all the networking is to make sure that your, com your computer and Ansible can communicate with all the Raspberry Pis using the IP addresses that we had set up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that I can ping all the servers from Ansible. And what this command is doing is saying, look at all the servers in the inventory file that I specified and run the ping module, which basically pings the server and checks and makes sure it can connect. And in this case, it's saying that it can connect to all of them, so that's good. I'll show you the inventory file really quick. Note that this one's a little more complicated than the one that I showed you in the networking video. Uh, this one shows you that, that I've split up the, the different servers by the balancer, which is this one on the top, and then the web servers, which is these two, the second and third Raspberry Pis, and then the database servers, which is the last two, the master and then the slave or the replica. So once I've set up that inventory file and made sure that I can communicate with the servers, I'm ready to run the Ansible playbook that'll deploy all the software that's needed. So I'm going to go to the provision the Raspberry Pi page here, and it gives me two commands I need to run. First, I need to make sure that I install all of the Ansible Galaxy requirements. So I run this command. I already did that. And I also need to make sure that I have a config.yaml file, which has all the specific settings for my cluster. So I've already copied this example.config.yaml file over to config.yaml, and I've tweaked a few settings to my likings. Once that's done, I can run this Ansible playbook command, which is going to run a bunch of different task lists that will install all the software that you need on all the Raspberry Pis. One of the cool things about using Ansible is, since I've already told it about all the servers that I have, I can run commands like this, which will check how much RAM is free on each of the Raspberry Pis using the free command. Once I've described everything to Ansible, then Ansible can do everything for me instead of me having to log into each of the servers. If you want to find out more about how to use Ansible this way and why you'd want to use Ansible, I have another video that I'll link called Ansible One-on-One -on, -one on a cluster of Raspberry Pis. I also wrote a book on it, Ansible for DevOps, if you're interested in diving deeper. But for now, I'm going to take this command and let it run. While it's running, I'll kind of briefly, briefly explain what it's doing and then I'll let it run while the video is sped up since it takes a while to run. So first of all, it's calling this main.yaml file. And this file includes three different files. One file that runs on the balancer, one file that runs on the database servers, and one file that runs on the web servers. So let's take a quick look at the database playbook. And if I look here, it loads some variables from these different files it makes sure that there's a certain uh, piece of software installed on the Raspberry Pis, the sudo, the sudo package. Then it will set up a firewall, it sets up some security settings, it installs and configures MySQL for the database server, and it also installs Munin Node, which is software used to monitor the server. And then there's also some scripts in a custom role I have that installs uh, a few scripts to control the LEDs on the front. You'll notice that the LEDs right now are all turned off, but through the course of this playbook, LEDs will start turning on, like this one just turned on as the configuration for the balancer just finished. So I have some scripts that will control the LEDs from software, and I'll show you how those are used at the end of the playbook run. Now that everything's finished, you'll notice that the LEDs on all the pies, except for the two web servers at this point, are turned on and green. That means that they're ready to go and that I could install Drupal on them next. Before I get to that though, I'll show you how the balancer is actually balancing the request to these other two servers uh, by loading the site www.pydramble.com, which is what I've configured in my config.yaml file. If I go here, it's actually going to send a request to this first server, and the first server is going to balance that request to one of the other two servers. So if I hit enter, you'll see that there is a red and a red on this one, and if I refresh the page, it's actually going to send the request to this server. And you'll see 
that every time I send a request, it always goes to the load balancer, and then the balancer sends the requests alternately to one of these two servers. So at this point, it's saying file not found, which basically means I don't have Drupal installed on the PyDramble cluster yet. Thanks for watching this video on how to use Ansible to provision all the software on these Raspberry Pis. In the next video, I'm going to show you how you can use Ansible to install Drupal on the Raspberry Pis and configure it. I hope that you'll subscribe and continue watching. Please let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see in the comments below the video.